Well, we really have four cases because there's really only four quadrants. <coughs> so here's what can happen. What I'm going to do is give you a picture, a, a representation of our angle, and then show you how to find the reference angle. Let's say we start with just a regular angle right there. Is the angle acute? Yeah, then we're already done. Then the angle is our reference angle. So right down here, the reference angle would just be theta itself. You don't have to do anything with that, which means you can find the trig function for the angle pretty easily just by using your unit circle. So that would be our reference angle. However, check it out. If I go past pi over 2, so for instance, this one, is that angle acute or obtuse? What I want to do is find the reference angle. Here's the reference angle. It's just the angle that the terminal side makes with the x-axis, which happens to be acute. So where this is my angle, the reference angle would be this shaded version over here. We just need a way to, to represent the shaded version right now. So if this is our, our terminal side and this is the x-axis, how much would this, <coughs> tell me this, how much would this whole angle be if it went all the way to here? Yeah. Do it in terms of radians. Right, this would be pi, sure. Now, would you agree that this shaded angle is pi minus whatever my original angle was? That's how we find a reference angle in this case for this quadrant. The reference angle would be pi minus your angle. That's going to give you an acute angle that, that's formed between the x-axis and your terminal side. Now, you if you're okay with this so far. You, you see where the pi is coming from. Pi is coming from because, well, this is... That's a measure of pi. We're subtracting our angle. We're going to get that shaded region. Let's keep going. What if we're over here? Can you see the reference angle I want to make right here? This is going, this is going past pi and then going a little bit. My reference angle has to be, an, again, an acute angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. So what I'm looking at is... This is the whole thing, right? That's the whole, whole pot or whole um, angle. I want just this little piece. So let's see. How much is it again from here to here? Okay. Now I'm going further, this much further. Would you agree that this angle is all the angle minus pi? Look at the angle. So this is this is the whole thing, right? And I want to take away all the non-shaded stuff. How much is all the non-shaded stuff? Pi. That's pi. So our reference angle here would be theta minus pi. <coughs> okay, last one. Looks like Pac-Man a little bit. In our case, our reference angle is going to be this shaded section. Can you can you think about what that's going to be? What do you think? In order to find the shaded section, we're, we're probably not going to do. Well, we could do. Well, no, we can't. We're probably not going to do anything with pi, but maybe with two pi. Two, two pi would be the whole thing. 2 pi minus theta. 2 pi minus theta might work. Because 2 pi would be this whole stuff. I want to subtract off the, the theta part. That's going to leave me with that, that cutout. I'm not sure if you're okay with that. Yes, 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 I'll take it. <coughs> so reference angle here. Okay, raise your hand if you're okay on where the reference angle idea comes from. You feel all right with it. Good. Now, would you like to see how to actually use it? Yeah. yeah, probably that might be nice, right? Let's see about that. So let's say I wanted you to find, you know, I'll move over here, get more room. Say I wanted you to find sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent of uh, 5 pi over 3. Can you do it? 
Sure. If you have a unit circle handy, absolutely. If you don't have a unit circle handy, all you would need to do is memorize sine, cosine, tangent of your first quadrant, then use ASTC. That, that, that's what I'm showing you here how to do. If you have a unit circle, it's really not a problem. You just go over it, right, and find that stuff. But check this out. If we want to find... <coughs> Sine, cosine, tangent. Of five pi over three using reference angles. Here's how we can do it. The first thing you're going to do you're going to have to locate it which quadrant it's in. So in other words, you're going to have to grab it. So right now, as I'm writing, writing down the next step, I want you to graph 5 pi over 3, okay? We just practice that on your own paper, graph 5 pi over 3. The next step after that, we're going to use this idea of reference angles. Find your reference angle. I'm thinking I gotta cut every pi into three parts. We've already done that today. I know five pi over three is, is positive, so we're gonna be going counterclockwise. I'm gonna count five pi over threes. So that means I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. I should be ending. At that one. Did you end at that one also? Okay, I'm going to erase this stuff just to make it not so bad for us. Right now, I want you to identify your reference angle. Can you shade it in? Just slightly shade in your reference angle. Be careful on your shading. We want something between the terminal side and the x axis, not the y axis. Don't care about the y axis. I want something between the terminal side and the x axis. So, do I shade this? Do I shade this? Yeah, that's, what I, that's my reference angle. We're actually in this situation right now. So how can I find the value of my reference angle? What would I do? Would I do the pi minus uh, theta or theta minus pi or the 2 pi? Which one am I going to do? Sure, I know that this is my angle, my 5 pi over 3. What I want to do is take the 2 pi and subtract my 5 pi over 3. That's going to give me this range. So the reference angle would be 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3. If you do it right, your reference angle should be something that's in the first quadrant. It should be represented in that. So uh, how much is 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3? Pi over 3. Yeah, that's it. You have 6 pi over 3 minus 5 pi over 3. That's pi over 3. Are you guys okay with the fraction work? So we've located the quadrant, we got that down, we know it's in the fourth quadrant, we were able to use that to find the reference angle. Now the idea is, I want you to find all your trig functions of the reference angle. So find the trig functions of the reference angle. So what I want from you is sine, cosine, and tangent of pi over 3. Anybody know off the top of their head how much is a sine of pi over 3, do you know? Yeah, that's exactly right. Off the top of your head? No. <laughs> okay, somebody else. Let's all play along here. Come on, let's do uh, cosine of pi over 3. Yeah, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. If you have cosine 
and you have sine, you should be able to find tangent, because tangent, we, we just found this out, is just sine over cosine. So if I divide sine over cosine, I'm going to reciprocate and multiply. How much is tangent of pi over 3, please? Perfect. I, I'm not going to do the rest of them, but you can see that you could do the same exact thing with uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, yes? Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this so far, getting those? Because this is a basic trigonometry. Here's how the reference angle idea worked with the ASTC. ASTC. If you know what quadrant this is in, you knew that it was everything's positive here, sine's positive here, tangent's positive here, cosine is positive there, and everything else is negative. Here, here's the deal. Once you have this, this is the reference angle, right? All we got to do is interpret what quadrant it was in, use the appropriate ASTC, and then we're going to be able to find out sine of 5 pi over 3 and cosine 5 pi over 3 and tangent. So if sine of <coughs> pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, sine of 5 pi over 3, without doing any more work, is sine, let's see, is sine positive or negative in this quadrant? Negative. negative. Definitely negative. Why? Well, because the only thing that's positive is cosine. The rest of them are negative. You follow me on that? So here we go, okay. What's, what's sine of 5 pi over 3 then? It's definitely negative, because sine has to be negative there. Have you already found out the reference angle measurement? Mm -hmm. Just use that measurement with the appropriate sign. Root 3 over 2. I think I've lost some people, because some of you look confused. You're like, ah, I have no idea what's going on here. Well, let's see, are you okay with STC? That's because someone beat it into your head a long time ago, you just remembered. Are you okay with the reference angles, how to find those? Okay, good. You're, you're just subtracting or uh, from something, or you're subtracting two quantities to make a, an acute angle with the x-axis. Are you okay that this angle goes to here? And that this reference angle, you have to take 2 pi minus the 5 pi over 3. And what you end up getting is pi over 3. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with getting the pi over 3? Are you sure? I need head nods or something. You can't just yeah. look at me. Okay, yes or no. That's okay too if you're no. Yes? Okay. Can you find sine, cosine, and tangent of pi over 3? You all should be going yes, because that's a necessity to even be in this class. You're supposed to be able to do that, right? You have to be able to do that. Here's the only thing I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking you to do is look at what quadrant that reference angle is in, what, what quadrant your angle is in. Whatever quadrant you're in, that's telling you what's positive and what's not. You just said you got ASTC, right? Now put it to practice. This is useless if you can't do anything with it. So you know that if my angle was here, everything would be positive. I would be done because my angle would be pi over 3. If your angle's here, you know that the only thing that's positive is sine. Everything else is going to be negative. Do you get it? If your angle's here, you know that tangent is going to be positive. Everything else is negative. Uh, because sine over cosine, negative over negative, would give you positive. That's why tangent is positive. If your angle's here, you know the only thing that's positive is cosine. The rest of them are negative. Do you get me? You've already done the legwork. You already know the values. This was the hard part. Now you just got to put uh, the signs on top of them. So we're, we're right here. We know the only thing that is positive is which one's positive for this? Cosine. Cosine's positive for this.